Hey Ruganath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Newport, Rhode Island. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Coach Stupidas. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Newport. I'm here live, live with Lori Pag and the Chief. They're regular Zoomers, if you don't know them. And uh, they got us a little house right next to their house to stay in a Miss, me and Miss Mare on vacation. And we're celebrating vacation by still doing the show every day and doing Sweet Baby Krishna every night. So there will be a Sweet Baby Krishna tonight. It was acted out by the Sweet Baby Krishna players last night, including mm-hmm. Lori Pag and the Chief and me and Mara. And tonight we're doing more devotees of Krishna stories. And it's quite fun. So you can join us at 8 p.m. It's for Patreon members. So if you want to be a Patreon member, um, you can be one. Patreon members, please tell your friends. We get a nice crew every evening. And uh, it's a wonderful way to wind down your evening with these stories from the Puranas, which are like the ancient stories of the universe. Great. Kostuba snuck in the other day, sort of incognito, the fake mustache. That was you, right? I don't know what you're talking about. You were there the other day. Come on. <laughs> I didn't have a fake mustache. Yeah. You didn't have a fake mustache. How are you? Bravo. I feel good. 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 Happy to be here with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. We don't have a walk on Wednesday today, though. Well, well, all right. <laughs> I thought you were... we don't have a walk on Wednesday. They wouldn't even remember it if you didn't say that. Oh, well, some people might. Like, where's our walk on Wednesday? Mara's walking on. Hi, well, hi, Mara. What's our? Give us some information. No, but we have a nugget. So we have a nugget. Well, uh, we have some announcements too. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're back to your cover your meetings today at one and nine thirty p.m. Eastern time, and our sweet baby Krishna tonight at eight p.m. All right. All right. I have to announce that my India pilgrimage in October is pretty much closed, and um, it, there's a bunch of people who are um, like, "Oh, I never registered." I'm getting all these emails. Um, if you didn't register and you think you're going, you got to register to go. <laughs> <laughs> you got to register to go, or it doesn't work. That's how it works. So if you want to go, October, we're doing a world. I'm like, so excited. And uh, booked our tickets, and I'm just now thinking of Vrindavan every day. I'm super excited. Ah, um, yeah, and me and Lori Pag, who's sitting here, we have a great retreat coming up, yoga and bhakti. It's a weekend at Super Soul Farm, the second weekend of September. September 8th through 10th. And yeah. You can go to Raghu's website for more information, raghunath.yoga. Chan Camp sold out, is that correct? Okay, That's but true. let's not go through every event, Raghunath. I can't do this every, every morning, man. Jan- I'm sitting here <laughs> looking at Lori Pag. And I'm mentioning the event. That's fine. And you mentioned two before that. And now you started to mention other ones. So I'm saying I, we can't do this. A lot this. is we happening. A lot is happening. People want to. The, pe- the people want to know, Kostuba. No, they don't. We don't can't censor do. this valuable information. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like one or two a day, and then you are spread you, them out. But you don't go you through them YouTube all. YouTube trying day. to censor me now. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> all right, come on. What's the nugget today? Who's Here's the nugget. Ready? From? Who's it from? This is from 
Jean or Jean. It's no, Jean. You're right. You're right. You got Jean it right. Arp. Do you know who Jean Arp is? I Jean Arp. Jean Arp sounds French. Yeah, Jean Arp is uh, was um, a German French sculptor, painter, and poet. He was known as a Dadaist and an abstract artist. Oh, a Dadaist? Dada. Dadaist. Yeah. You know what that is, Mira? That's a school of art, you know? Yeah, that's about all I know about it. It's pretty good that you knew that. Okay. All right. Sure. What did he have to say? He said, Look at soon, the world. soon okay. yeah. silence will have passed into legend. Hmm. Well, you know, we trying to look, I guess not yet because there was some dead air there. <laughs> but there's more. Then okay. it's got his name. I thought you were just trying to bring it back. <laughs> Soon silence will have passed into legend. Yeah. Man has turned his back on silence. Oh. Day after day, he invents machines and devices that increase noise and distract humanity from the essence of life, contemplation, and meditation. Okay, I think you needed a little pause. It has distracted humanity from the essence of life. Contemplation, meditation. Uh-huh. Right. Um, let me ask you a question here. When yeah. was this written? Do you know? When, when did, did he, he say die? this? When did he die? He died in um, 66, right? When we were born. And there wasn't that much noise back then. I don't think, think they had leaf blowers. Like people had rakes and brooms. Then. They didn't have leaf blowers. Leaf blowers. <laughs> right. I don't like leaf blowers personally. If you want to, I'm, I'm against them. To me. Yeah. It's just like rake the leaves, people. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, really. Walking around, blowing things around. <laughs> What's Rascals. the matter with you? <laughs> Rascals. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to think. You have a telephone. That made noise. Your cars made noise. But other than but that. But there's a lot less cars. A lot less cars. A lot less telephones. It's not that every single person had a telephone. You had a telephone in the home. That was it. But, and you had one, you know, maybe two phones, two extensions in your house. Yeah, with a long, long, uh, long cord. Cord on it. Yeah, a long. That cord. was considered like a modern thing. Like a whoa, look at the cord on the thing. It's really long. It was like that's like, like a new ten thing. feet long. <laughs> um. Yeah. And so yeah. So that was. So but now, of course, if you even juxtapose our life in 1972 to like walking into the forest, me and Mara go on beautiful nature walks every day. That's what oh, we do. That's what too. we do for joy. And um, some we find some incredible places. And we were walking down not far from our house, and it was so quiet and beautiful. Remember, Mara? Yeah. And and to wake up <laughs> to that quietude, that's what everything was like like village life hmm. it's and it's hard to believe and then we started creating noisemakers and the noisemakers rob the peace of mind um and that peace of mind is is not just a luxury it's kind of a necessity for being able to gear your mind in the right way right I mean, not an absolute necessity but it's favorable it's very favorable it's important right sure you know, another interesting twist to this was a person was telling, I was talking to a person who's been practicing yoga and bhakti for a, a while now. Okay. He's going through this crossroads in his life. And he's like, I'm trying to really figure out this next phase of my life. He's like in his mid forties. Yeah. And he's like, how do I stop these vrittis in my mind? You know, and he's single and he's, you know, um, tr trying to get married and thinking about stuff like this. And, and and he and I was like, well, sexual passion is noise in the mind. When oh, you get overly it sex, right? There, really. it, right? It's, it's a type of noise that it like is is like screams at you oftentimes. If you if you if that never gets addressed and it, and it it brings to some type of regulation, then the quietude won't happen, even if you're living in the forest. Even if you're living at you know the bottom of the Grand Canyon, it's not going to happen. Oh, who was it? The one that was down in the water? Who was the the sage? Uh... Augustum. I, I mean, um, Shurabi. Thank you, Mayor. Got that. Shurabi Mooney. Uh, I mean, Sabari Mooney. Sabari Mooney. Sabari Mooney. He was uh, he was underwater meditating. Some sages can go underwater. Isn't that unbelievable? 
Yeah. Wim Hof can go underwater. <laughs> your uh, your camera's shaking like crazy. I don't know why. You know why? It's my table, and I'm leaning on the table, and I bang on the table, and it looks like <laughs> an earthquake. Gonna... You thought it's it was like another my... earthquake. It's disturbing my silence. Yes. So um, yes, Sabari so Mooney was sitting underwater and he was just sitting there peacefully meditating. And then he saw two fish copulating. 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 That's a scientific word for, word for sex. Okay. And then um, in that, co- in his mind. It, it, then his mind got disturbed and the Vritis screwed up and, and he ended up uh, like leaving his um, sage position. He fell mm-hmm. back down into the material pool, so to speak. Uh, so yeah. yeah. There, there needs to be an external sil- an external silence to help that assists us like well, living in the countryside, et cetera. But even, you're a perfect you example know, of living in the country. I mean, you're living in the city, yeah. but you're also, you know, I'm thinking about all these devotees in New York. They're quite impressive because they're living amongst it, but they're not of it. Mm. They're living amongst the noise of the city, but they've created a quietude in their mind. I'm quite impressed. You're the country mouse. I'm the city mouse. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mouse. Two mice can remember be that friends, kids? though. Mary, did you know that City Mouse Country Mouse? Yeah. Yeah, she knows that because it's still did. around. We it's all did. The little children's book is still around. Um, but yeah, or what to speak of internet and scrolling and we can all, you know, of course, all that stuff is like, that's just filling in. But yeah, just even just noise itself, just like, like, you know, sound noise is, is just like crazy. It's, it's, we don't have a chance to slow down. And you know what, we're going to, it's kind of like, um, certain things in life need to be done regularly otherwise yeah. it gets out of control right even just like cleaning the house you got to kind of stay on top of it all the time you don't do it like you know you, you got it it's something that has to be done re- hygiene you know it's got to be done regularly and when it comes to the mind you know this is the teachings of the sages you know like patanjali you know he was saying how do you, how do you if you want to root some something deeply in your mind firmly in your mind you have to you have to have the right devotion. This is how he defines practice. You know, you have to have the right dedication or devotion to it. Mm-hmm. You have to do it uh, for a long time. It takes some patience, you know, because the mind, you know, it, it, it's kind of like a dog's tail. It keeps snapping back and you got to keep even in it out. And, and you have to do it regularly day by day by day by day by day. Sure. Otherwise, if you pop in there every, every few days and try it, it's not going to stick. Mm. And, and so meditation is like, he's, he's saying, you know, like that because there's no silence, we're not prone to sit down and meditate. Take, I'm going to consciously take my mind where I want it to go for this period of time every day. I'm going to consciously invest the thoughts, or you could even say the sound that I want reverberating through my mind. I'm going to consciously place Mm -hmm. it there and I'm going to do it every day so that it begins to take root and so that I begin to feel it and see the world through it um all the other time of the day when i'm not sitting there doing that and so we call that meditation you know mantra meditation we we do and we're going to talk about that today we're going to because it's going to it's going to tie into the sh- to to what we're hearing about ajamiel and his whole adventure i'm having a personal japa reform happening in my life i am too are you yeah me too yeah. Yeah, me too. Oh, man, it's like we're like the two monkeys with the, with the the the, the, the sweet potatoes on different islands. Yeah. yeah, it's just like I'm. It's like I'm praying. I'm calling Krishna. It's like why am I calling Krishna personally yet not being present with him? It's There's like no saying, point. "Hey, Mara, come here," and then I'm not even looking at her or paying attention to her. So I'm really, really, really trying to make uh, um, the japa much more. When I say personal, I mean like relating to Krishna as he's with me right now. Yeah. And uh, I have this other thing I do, which is I, I get a, a picture of Krishna that I'm in love with. And I have a few different ones that I use and I sit with it. And I and I try to like, sometimes ever look at something and you don't actually even looking at it. And, and, and you can't even, you know, you might have a painting in your house, like your painting of Krishna and Balaram you have in your house, but you don't even know what is Krishna wearing exactly. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, so I do, I, I, I study the picture and then I Details. close my eyes and see if I can remember that face of Krishna. Oh, what does the crown look like? What does the peacock feather look? And what I'm doing is I'm training my mind to hold that image whenever I want it. Whenever I call out call to Krishna, line. I have that image perfectly like branded in my consciousness. Okay. And I do that floor. with my chanting too, um, like that, have a, have, a, have a picture of Krishna within my mind. 
I'm on my personal job of reform. Me too. You know, I've been chanting early in the morning now. And then when the evening rolls around, like for me, like 5.30 is already evening, you know. Mm. What's the speaker? Like 6.30. I've been going out to the park, to the Cheap's Meadow, and I just sit there and I chant extra Raghunath. Extra, extra rounds, right? Because mm. like Raghunath and I... Once uh, once you tell somebody about it, you lose all the credit for it, though. I'm sorry. It's it's, it's I'm not doing it for, for material <laughs> credit, rather. And... and, and and um but but you know we've taken vows to chant 16 rounds right of the maha mantra so 16 times 108 and uh you know so, so you do that but it's easy to fall into the trap of i'm just chanting to, to fulfill the vow sure so it's really helpful to go beyond that vow and 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 do extra now you're not doing it just to fulfill the vow it just takes you into another space already you know and then right. hopefully you drag more of that space into the earlier space into the 16 and and you just start to fall in love with the mantra you know That's I, I, to I, we want to encourage everybody to do one round a day one very conscious round right. of hearing the holy name with the intention of calling krishna to direct you and to direct you in your life what is my next step that could be a good in intention what is my next step krishna on my spiritual okay. path one quality round everybody everybody listen to zoom. quality yeah and, and you know this that is should be, be our that should be our thing you want to get the zoom codes you chant one round a day you're not chanting one round a day give me the codes back we're changing the codes on you right now we need if you are on zoom but not chanting at least one round a day raise your hand go ahead do it <laughs> we want to see you. Anybody? We want to publicly shame you in front of about 12,000 people. <laughs> okay, everybody's chanting at least one round a day. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, and, and um, when one chants, when one meditates on the vibration of the Maha Mantra, the great teachers have, you know, they've outlined how to do it, how, how one will become most receptive to its Shakti, right, to its power. And they define 10 important considerations, mm -hmm. things that we need to take in mind. Now, um, Ajamil, he, he called out the name Narayan when he was dying. And it said that he did it inoffensively. And we're going to talk a little bit about what that means. And it seems like, well, let's, we'll, we'll get to it. Let's, let's go ahead and dive in and start reading Raghunath. And then we can, we can see how, how this all applies. I, I needed to add something. You know, what's another yeah. like uh, constant mind dis distressor distractor what's is, it? you know, when you install an app and you're like, uh, whatever, you know, the health app or Instagram or Venmo, can we send you notifications? And it, it sounds like innocent enough. Yeah, of course. I'd like to be notified about what's going up. Thank you, Venmo. Mary's and all like, of a sudden no, you're no. <laughs> no, no, no notifications. <laughs> I'm gonna haunt you all day long. It's yeah, yeah they've re yes. Like every now and then, Instagram says, "Do you want to be notified every time anyone comments on anything you put?" No, I don't. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't want like all day long this thing to be all day yeah. long. Just give me a little hit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's start this. Narayanam namaskrityanaram chaiva narottamam devim sarasvatim vyasam tatojayam madiriyat. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. To Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasa, day of the author. Nasta prayeshva badreshu nicham bhagavat sevaya bhagavati uttama shloki. Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki, by regular attendance and classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees. All that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Agyana Timurandasya Agyana Anjana Salakaya Chakshurun Madhatam Nena Tasmai Shri Gurveda Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with a torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Okay. Venmo would like to track your, how about that one? They want to track oh, your, yeah. act, like track me. Do you have Venmo? I do. Is Venmo weird? Like Kostuba just Why paid about <laughs> Parmananda five bucks. What the, I don't want to know that. Okay. Right. <laughs> 
You ready? Talk about invasive, invading your privacy. Ah, oh, okay. We're reading chapter two. Oh, yes. Of the sixth right. canto. I think we're just starting the chapter today, right? Yep. Text one. Text so, one. Okay, so, so this, what's the title of the chapter? Oh, Ajamil delivered. All right. So if you were thinking, well, uh, we last left off, you know, they, they, they put out a pretty good case. The, the, the uh, Yamadudas yeah. are like, look, this is the they deal. This is the case. material world. Deal with it. You know, play stupid games, get stupid prizes. That's what they basically said to Ajamil and to the Vishnu Dudas. He screwed up. Now he's got to pay. He didn't atone. He didn't atone. And so here's some good news. There's magic in the world. And the magic comes in the form of Lord Vishnu and the servants of Vishnu, the Vishnu Dutas. Here's what they have to say. Or well, here's what's happening now. And they're, they're going to make their case now. Okay. The narrator <laughs> says, My dear king, the servants of Lord Vishnu are always very expert in logic and arguments. Okay. After hearing the statements of the Yamadudas, they replied as follows. So we heard the Yamadudas' arguments. Now the Vishnu, Vishnu Dutas. Dutas take the stand. Alas, <laughs> how painful it is that irreligion is being introduced into the assembly where religion should be maintained. Is this oh, the, whoa, is that is religion it, is Dharma? Is that what the translation is? I don't have that. Yeah, Sanskrit Dharma. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's um it's kind of like they came out the gate, like they could have um they right. could have said, well, you know, you made a lot of good points there. Right. They, didn't, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say that at all. They were like, no, whoa, they you guys are really upside down. Yeah, they came out like, you guys don't understand anything. So, yeah, this is questions of Dharma, right? They're, they're saying you, you're, you're posing as if you understand Dharma, but you're bringing a Dharma, Dharma Drisham, persons who are interested in maintaining Dharma, a Dharma. You're bringing an a Dharma into this whole assembly. Mm -hmm. It's with that. So they're saying you guys don't know anything. It's kind of like they didn't even give them an inch. Yeah. yeah, it's like council got together. They talked. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go in there strong. We're not going <laughs> to give them an inch. We're not going to get. We're not going to validate anything they said. But they're more powerful, so they could do this, right? It's like yeah, and they're quite beautiful too. They're very beautiful. These beautiful angels with these thunders. Beautiful voices, people so. is it? It's a type of privilege, beauty. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna, let's keep going. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. So um, text three now, right? Oh, no. Had we finished text two? Keep reading text two. Next two. Rich Alas, again. how painful it is that a Dharma is being painful. introduced in the assembly where Dharma should be maintained. Indeed, those in charge of maintaining Dharmic principles are needlessly punishing a sinless, unpunishable person. Oh, imagine what the Vishnu does. What are you talking about? Like, what are you about? talking about? Sinless. <laughs> this guy's this whole life was wrecked. And now the Vishnu Dudas are claiming this is like a real good court case. Yeah. This is like the OJ trial. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they're, they're, they, look, look what's going on here. This guy is sinless. And everybody now in the courtroom, if there is a courtroom, at least the, the, the Yama Dudas are like shocked. Okay, let's keep it going now. A king of governmental, a governmental, a, a king, king or governmental or... official should be so well qualified that he acts as a father maintainer and protector of the citizens because of affection and love. Yeah. He should give the citizens good advice and instructions according to the standard scriptures and should also be equal to everyone. Yamaraj does this for he is the supreme master of justice. And so, and so do those who follow in his footsteps. However, if such persons become polluted and exhibit partiality by punishing an innocent, blameless person, where will the citizens go to take shelter for their maintenance and security? So he's Whoa. going right after a character assassination. He's glorifying <laughs> well, he's, he's their boss. He's not, he's not. It's not their character. It's their behavior that he's that they're addressing. Okay. Right. Okay. But but yeah. But but he's putting it all on them. He's saying you've got a good boss, but you're not representing him well. What's going to happen to all the people? Mm. You guys are really off. They, they, they're definitely confrontational. Hmm. The mass of people follow the example of a leader in society and imitate their behavior, yeah. except as evidence, whatever the leader accepts, right? Yad, yad, okay. achariti, shretas, mm -hmm. right? People in general are not very advanced in knowledge by which to discriminate between dharma and adharma. The innocent, unenlightened citizens, citizen is 
like an ignorant animal hmm. sleeping in peace with its head on the lap of its master, oh. faithfully believing in the master's protection. Yeah. If a leader is actually kind hearted and deserves to be the object of the living entity's faith, how can he punish or kill a foolish person who has fully surrendered in good faith and friendship? Yeah, the the the, the Yamadudas just must be like, what the hell are they talking? They're coming right after this, us. This, like, the, you're like talking about this Ajamil. Like he's like this wicked person that's done all these bad things, and you're saying he's like this soft little lamb that's just resting like, on your and, lap. and we're abusing him. We're doing what we're supposed to do. We're carrying out the Dharma. They just hmm. don't get it. Ajamil yeah. has already t atoned for all of his sinful activities. Hmm. What? Indeed, he has atoned not only for his sins performed in one life but for those perform in millions of lives. For in a helpless condition, he chanted the holy name of Narayan. Oh. This is a very, 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 this is like having a, po a, a pocket of change, right? And pocket in that change, you have like a, what is it, Henry? A 1955 double die Lincoln penny. <laughs> you know, you have some incredibly rare, Valuable, valuable coin in your loose change or in your ashtray in your car and you don't realize like this this is worth like a hundred thousand dollars i have a 1909 svdb lincoln penny wheat penny what wheat, a wheat one you know what a wheat penny is it has this little uh it's got the wheat, wheat in the back but yeah. you don't even notice these things it's mixed in with all your pennies but if it's got the proper mint mark right then all of a sudden this penny has now become incredibly rare and worth for someone who has keen eye. So these words that people are saying at the time of death, rattling off nonsense, he rattled off Narayan. And it appears like a normal word. No, this is invested with so much power. You like that analogy? Yeah, I'd like that. Nine S V D B. Yeah. And, and and if this were a court case again, like now they've presented the crucial piece of evidence, right? It's yeah. like you're saying he's guilty. We're saying he's innocent. How can you say he's innocent right here? He chanted the name Narayan. He did it in a helpless condition. And you apparently do not understand the power of that, that that atoned not only for the sins that you mentioned, not only for the misbehavior that you mentioned, that when you call this name out in a helpless condition, that it wiped out all of his bad karma going back many lifetimes. You don't understand that? Then how, how, how do they give you this job if you don't understand that, right? We shouldn't even need to be here right now. If you knew your job, we wouldn't have needed to come here. But this, you, you don't understand the power of the name of Narayan and when it's called out in that condition. Now, uh, continue. Even though. Um, even though he did not chant purely, he chanted without offense. So this is an interesting uh, discernment between he didn't chant Purely, but purely. he chanted without offense. Yeah, so there's three levels, right? There's the offensive level of chanting. That's on one end. There's the pure level of chanting. That's on the other end. And then there's kind of like what they call like the shadow level, right? Where you're not mm -hmm. chanting that pure name yet, but you're but you're doing it with a type of um, sincerity. Well, it was sincerity, and in in in, in Jamil's case, I think it was desperation, uh, but but with a, a kind of earnestness that that it does that it deserves right a, a kind of a kind of earn that you, you're you're honoring it that that name as you meditate on it rather than offending it means like and we'll get into that but like you know like say you someone comes a guest comes into your home and you just ignore them you know uh, you, you don't care for them you don't show them respect it's kind of like if you're meditating you're chanting on this name and the whole idea is that the name is not different from God. So you invite God into your mind or into your heart, but then you ignore them. You're, you're, you're not paying attention. You're not attentive. Mm. Um, or, or there are other ways. And we're, we're going to get into that. Let's read a few more verses, and, uh, and, and we'll, then we'll, we'll dive into some stuff to help explain this. Finish that verse. Okay. No. The uh, and, and there, okay, okay. Even, even though he did not chant purely, he chanted without offense, and therefore he is now pure and eligible for liberation. Like, really? Are you kidding me? Yeah. The Vishnu dude has continued, even previously while eating and at other times, this Ajamil would call his son saying, my dear Narayan, please come here. Ooh. 
Anybody pregnant out there? You want to name your kid? You need a good name? Narayan. We can help you. We've got lots of good names of Lord Vishnu to call on. You can call every time you call your child around. Come here, little Krishna. Come on, time to eat, Krishna. Krishna, get back here. Krishna, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> it has Krishna, an effect. I'm not making this stuff up. It's in the Bhagavatam. It has yeah. an effect on us. Although, even if you're mad at Krishna, Krishna. Okay. Simply by chanting the name of Narayan in this way, he sufficiently atoned for sinful reactions of millions of lives. Sounds hard to believe, Kastuba. Believe it. Now, where we're going now. Oh, actually. Uh, yeah, where we're going now, these next two verses, 9 and 10. These verses echo the language. This is real important. The, you know, we're going to, there are these ancient texts, right? Yeah. There's all kinds of texts. There's tons yeah. of them out there. <laughs> um, Where are you going with this? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> th what we're going to read here, it kind of echoes the language of these texts like the, the Manu Samhita. Okay. Okay. And the Manu Samhita is a very ancient text, and it's, it's really a text for another age. Mm. You know, it, it's, it's, um, when Prabhupada mentioned the Manu Samhita, he would say like, oh, if you tried to live by that, you guys, you, you wouldn't make it 10 minutes, you know. It's, it's, um, but, and that's okay. It's like, we, we accept it as being real and being truth. But we accept that in our age, for who we are, and what's the best way for us to practice, we have to go right to the very essence. And therefore, like, at the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, to illustrate what's going on, Vyasadeva, he has the sages of Naimi Sharanya place questions before Sutta Goswami, the qualified speaker, right? Mm. And one of the questions they ask is, now that the age of Kali is coming, where will people go for refuge, right? Where will they go? And the answer to that question um, comes uh, in, the, in the third chapter, where uh, the answer is given, this Bhagavad Purana, this Srimad Bhagavatam, is as brilliant as the sun, and it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode, accompanied by Dharma and Jnana and etc. Right? All of the all of the Dharma, you know, people don't live by it now. It's like it's it's so hard to find. Mm -hmm. Right? It says persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness in the age of Kali shall get their light from this Purana. Right? This is so, why we read this one. Yeah, it's not it's not from the Manu Samhita. Now, if we read the Manu Samhita, Raghunath, and I think today and tomorrow we can dip into these two things. Like if you read the Manu Samhita, whew, it's it's like you get it's lost the, in these details it, of how to oh, live yeah. an appropriate life and how to put all these rules on of atoning. If you do this, you got to do this. If you do this, you got to do this. Yeah. And it seems like the most impractical. It's interesting, but it seems like it seems like a lot of very, very impractical things. A lot of impractical things, um, a lot of things, uh, it, there's a lot, it gives a lot of weight to the different um, social um, st strictures and regulations, a lot to the Varnashram Dharma, which became the, what, what happens if, if you get people in this age trying to apply the Manu Samhita, you get this bizarre caste system and, and, and it's used for oppression. Like if you read the Manu Samhita, right, it's almost like, it's, it's like from, it's a book that's meant to apply to like, not just centuries ago, but just like, like millennia ago, but many, many millennia ago. Right? Now like, everybody wants to read it. We've really built this thing up. <laughs> but, but it's kind of like in that day, the difference between like the Brahmana, like the spiritual leader and the Shudra, like the common, the common person, it seems like it must've been so vast. Hmm. Right. It's like now everybody's got some sutra mixed into them, right? We're it's all like a little bit of sutra, we're all a little bit of like intellectuals. We're all it, it's actually said in the Kali. This is the age of the Kalawa month. Sudra Sambhavam, that that in the age of Kali everyone is. You know, so so such privilege is given to the Brahmana. Mm. So it's kinda like it'll say like if you kill a Brahmana, the atonement for that is like severe. It's like it's like you I don't know I could look it up and find what it said, but it's gonna be like for for the next 10 years you know you have to fast on just like raw barley 
<laughs> you know, and um, stand on one leg. And, you know, it's going to yeah. go like on and on, you know. And then it'll say like, if you kill a sudra, well, give a pot of ghee to a brahmana. <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'll be something like that. <laughs> you know? There's a whole, there's going to be a whole like Me Too movement of, of, yeah, about right. that verse. And so the point is, and Prabhupada said, forget about Mono Samhita. That's he'll quote it occasionally as a, as an interesting reference. Yeah. But it's Bhagavatam that we go to now. Bhagavatam, what the Bhagavatam is going to say that in this day and age, you, you, it's it's interesting, Raghunath. The the fir, what's the first question that Maharaj Parikit puts before Shukadev Goswami, where we really begin to hear the Bhagavatam. What's the duty of a man about to die? Right. And the answer to that question is that, that that's the question that was asked at the very end of the first canto. It's like the last thing that's mentioned, right? He asked that question. And then the first chapter of the second canto, um, that question is answered by Shukadev Goswami. What, what, is, what should a person do when they're about to die? which means really all of us, because we're all about to die. It says, O King, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord. Right? Meditation on the names. Uh, partic meditation, and particularly meditation on the name. Right? After the ways of the great authorities is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all, including those who are free from all material desires, those who are desirous of material enjoyment, and also those who are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge. So wherever you're at, the, 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 the recommended way to go from all the great spiritual authorities, the way, and fearless, right? Because even if you don't do it just right, it, it's got mercy and it keeps helping you, right? It, is the chanting. Now that's, so in one sense, that's the very beginning of the Bhagavatam, right? It's the, it's the first answer. Mm. Now, if you no matter to, where you are, what your social order is, whether you're a Brahmin, whatever. whether you're a Sudra, whether you're a Mutt, um, and uh, it's a new age, we're going to do things differently. Nobody's qualified. Here's what we got. We've taken the essence of all the past. Forget about the past. Here's the essential teachings. This itself is pretty old, and it it comes from that same context. But we're we're real. We we have vision. We have vision into the future. You're not going to be able to do it. I'm, we're dealing with a bunch yeah. of Kali Yuga dummies. And um, here's, here's the essence. Manda right Sumanda here. Matiyo, we got disturbed minds. We got you, bad habits. You're broken. You got kids. iPhones. You got bad, bad habits. You're addicted. Yeah. You know, you're one click away from ruining your life. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it, yeah. And, and, and it's really self realization for dummies, isn't it? Yeah. So, so, so the first thing he, he doesn't recommend doing some kind of Manusamita level atonement. He doesn't recommend doing some kind of other, he says, chanting, meditating on these names. Then the very, do you know the last verse of Bhagavatam, Raghunath? The, the last very last verse. verse. So that was the beginning of the Bhagavatam. Now the very last verse, I, don't think I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Lord, Hari. The congregational chanting of whose holy names destroys all bad karma. And the offering of obeisances unto whom relieves all material suffering. Ooh, that's the very last I verse. Memorize that verse. That's the very last verse. So it's it's really so. Bhagavatam begins by glorifying meditation on the names. It ends by glorifying meditations on the names. And the and what we're reading in Bhagavatam right now in the fifth canto, kind of towards the middle, mm -hmm. is um an explanation of just why that is just how powerful and unique it is. So let's read this. Let's, let's read the, 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 the Vishnu Dudas are speaking in the language of Manu Samhita now talking to the Yama Dudas who are all about that kind of vision, right? If you do this bad, bad, sinful thing, you have to tone for it in this way. If you don't, you get punished. That's the way Dharma works. That's their vision is kind of right there. They don't have a deep conception of, the mercy of Lord Vishnu, the mercy of Sri Krishna, the soft hardness, the love, the, the the whole bhakti thing, they're not so well aware of. They're kind of just into the dharmic rules and regulations. And, the, and this, this leela that we're hearing right now, this narration, is meant to kind of crack that in us and help us understand, instill faith in us, mm. that I, I may be broken, right? I, I, may, I may not be a great meditator, 
I may, I may have so many bad habits and, and, and a mind full of so much junk, but have faith that this name is super powerful and, and it changes everything, right? Mm. Because it is non-different from Krishna himself. So let's hear um, text 9 and 10. Text 9 and 10. The chanting of the holy name of Lord Vishnu is the best process of atonement for a thief, for a thief of gold or other valuables. Okay, okay. you're a thief. We got something. So that's for you. the Manu is going to talk about those kind of people and what they have right. to do to atone, right? Right. For a drunkard, those people too is going to talk. About yeah. That. For one who betrays a friend and relative. Okay. Okay. That talks about all that. Okay. For one who kills a Brahmin, talks about that. Or for one who indulges in sex life with a wife or what? The yes. wife of his guru. Or oh. another superior. That the the, the monosimita talks about that and the atonement is so severe. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to go I've there. I've never even thought about something like that. I didn't even want to read that. Well, this kind of thing gets brought up in many places. Because they're law books. They're law books that the Brahmins study, and they, they, they it's almost like this is... One of the worst things you can do, right? It's like you are a low-down, dirty <laughs> dog. The lowest <laughs> you thing know? you can do. Sex with your guru's wife. Yeah, yeah. And like the atonement Krishna. is, like, really severe. It's like, yeah, you're really... You're People were really doing crazy dog. things forever, weren't they? Yeah. It is also the best method of atonement for one who m murders women, the king, or his father. Just the worst things you can do. Like the king is the person that's protecting everyone, and you go and kill that person, right? Right. And and it's showing also, you know, a lot of what these texts talk about, although they don't snap neatly into our modern um, gender roles and all that, but they do talk a lot about the respect that has to be given to women and the, and how the mistreatment of women mm. is really the downfall of society. Um. Yeah, well, there's still, you know, Killing women, killing kings, killing, killing, you know, trying to assassinate people. Kill and, people. and then it's, it's mentioned all these horrible, what's another horrible thing you can do? Slaughtering cows. Slaughtering cows. And mm -hmm. we do that like crazy, our society. Yeah, we do it. And for all other sinful men, simply by chanting the holy name of Lord Vishnu, such simple persons may attract the attention of the Supreme Lord, who's, who therefore considers, because this man has chanted my holy name, my duty is to give them protection. Okay. That is a kind, that is an act of forgiveness. It says something about Lord Vishnu's behavior, and it says something it's about hard. us trying to be, us trying to follow in the footsteps in that sense. Uh, we want to also become forgiving. Uh, we have to be very quick to, we, we, this is our big subject yesterday on the, uh, on the uh, Sweet Baby Krishna, oh. wasn't it? We talked about very, 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 very tolerant. That's part of what we do. We're very, very, very tolerant. People can harm us or shout at us and hate us and, you know, cancel us. We don't go in there. We say, you know, whatever, I'm getting some karma right now. But we're very, very quick to forgive people. Very, very quick to forgive people. But, but, you know, it's that it, it all comes this. I think tomorrow and tomorrow's show, we can go into depth on this. But essentially what we're saying is, we, and we just read about, right, that in this age, Okay, Manusamita, it is what it is, but that's not the book that we need for this age. Hmm. We're dented cans, we're all messed up, and, and we need to know where this, we need to focus right on the essence. Bhagavatam, beginning, middle, end, right, is saying that Krishna is the source of everything, and particularly in this age, in this age by meditation on his name, you purify yourself because you come in direct contact with him. Hmm. But how do you, how do you, absorb that how do you not just have it bounce off you like like a well-oiled duck right just like roll off you right? <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. you, you, how do you absorb it that's important so then you get like this important verse which is defined as like our our path to perfection mm. which is trinata peace suni chena tadori vasuhishana right be more humble than a blade of grass be more tolerant than a tree Amanena, manadena, offer all respect to others, and don't be worried about having some prestige for yourself. Why? That's, a, that's such a big one, huh? It, it offer is. Offer all but, respect to others, validate everybody else, but don't try to snooze, search out validation for yourself. <laughs> We're expecting nothing for ourselves, but give it to everybody else. And, and the reason why this is so important, like what, what, 
What does that do for you? Kirtaniya Sadahari, it gives you the ability to absorb yourself deeply in Kirtan, in, in these names, right? And, and, and so from that platform, you'll absorb them deeply. Mm. And, and so this is news to the, to the um, Yamadudas. They were not aware of this. The Vishnu Dudas are like, what are you like totally inexperienced? Don't you get it? He chanted this name. He did it in a mood that was that was good enough that this took strong effect and it wiped out. You, you should be looking at the you know at the the tally of his bad karma and be and and, and see it's all gone. Right. Right. But you know you want to hear a little Manu Samita just to get a feel yeah. for what it's like. So <laughs> Manu, who, like, let's just share. Manu is the father of mankind. They say. And that he is one of the first, right? He's one of the first created humans, and it's where we get the word. It's where we get the English word "man" from. Yeah, you know, little okay. word, little word so, smith in there. So, so let's first talk about um, atonement for killing. Different okay. types of killing. What happens if I kill somebody? What do I have to do? Well, first, there's for destroying or killing any kind of creature that is bred in food, in condiments, in fruit, in flowers. Wait, it sounds like Say that it again? sounds, it sounds any, like any animal that's in other words it sounds to me like they're saying like let's say you you eat something and in, unintentionally okay you eat some tiny little bug gnat or something like that yeah, that's in my food by mistake it seems like it seems like that's what it's talking to right bread and food and condiments and fruit and flowers maybe by mistake you kill some little okay. little so the toma for that um, is to eat clarified butter. Okay, I could do that. Okay, okay, no problem. Yeah, <laughs> we can not, work with that. Not a big deal. Okay. okay. So Merrick at the butter. I drove made, here. We got a, him's a cow. Probably killed lots him's of a, bugs on the way here. Yeah. Now, yes. if a man destroys for no good purpose plants produced plants. by cultivation, just like wrecking someone's garden. Yeah. Good. There should such, be a heavy karma for that. What do you get for that? Well, or even, um, or such as spontaneously spring up in the forest. So even like if you just for no good purpose are wiping out stuff in the forest, just pulling out saplings recklessly. Yeah. Are that that person to atone? They should attend a cow during one day, subsisting on milk alone. One day, I drink only milk and I take care of a cow. Like whatever you need, cow, I'm here for you. I'm going to brush Anything? you. you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Turn it into cartoon again. <laughs> okay. What okay. else? Sorry. I could do that. Okay. Now Take it's going to get heavier again. though. Now it's going to get heavier. Okay. He who has committed the offense of slaying a cow or a bull. All right. This is going to be bad. Let's see. All right. Okay. Yeah. Go. They shall drink during the first month of this atonement so this atonement is going to go on for months yeah. okay one month during the first month they should drink a a decoction of it's like a, a tea or something right yeah of barley grains i can do it. that doesn't seem like much i think only that you you have only that you know Fast it's not like not month. like you just have to drink a little bit of that no like for a month you're just going to have that for the first month That's you have to shave bad. off all your hair I I do that on the regular. You have to cover yourself with the hide of the of that of that slain cow. And what you have to it? live in the cow house. Live in a barn for a month, wear leather, and fast on barley water. That doesn't sound no, so most bad. Most people don't want to live for a month in the cow house just drinking barley water, Roganath. Now and well, that's it's just not as start. bad as killing a cow. It's, it well, seems well, we're like not done yet. Okay. What During else? the two following months. You shall eat only a small quantity um, without any salt I can't at every fourth salt. meal time. So now you're only having Not that bar meal time. What? Every fourth meal? In other words, you're only going to eat, like, if you eat three times a day, now you're only going to eat, like, once every other day, practically. So, like, every time you would have had four meals, you're only going to have one. And it's going to be like just a tiny little quality of this barley water without any salt or anything in it. Okay, intermittent for fasting. the next two months. You can do that for the next two months. I'm waiting for something tough to happen. Um, during the day, 
he shall follow the cows and standing upright inhale the dust raised by their hooves at night mm -hmm. after serving them he shall remain in the posture called virasana virasana you're not going to lie down for two months you're gonna okay you know virasana yeah yeah it's hero's pose yeah it's controlling himself and free from anger he must stand when they stand follow them when they walk and seat himself when they lie down when a cow is sick or threatened by danger from thieves tigers and the like or falls or sticks in a morass he must relieve her by all possible means in okay. heat in rain in cold or when the wind blows violently he must not seek to shelter himself without first sheltering the cows according to his ability let him not say a word if a cow eats anything in his own or another's house or field or on the threshing floor the slayer of the cow who serves cows in this manner removes after three months the guilt which is incurred by killing a cow that's hmm. not an easy thing to do it's not easy but i thought it was gonna be worse but then if you kill a sutra, the, give a pot of <laughs> ghee to oh. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> <You know? laughs> Krishna. Um, but after he has fully performed the penance, he must give to brahmanas, learning in the Vedas, 10 cows and a bull. Or if he doesn't possess such property, he must offer them all that he has. So you have to give away everything you own practically, you unless have. you're like wealthy. Okay. Okay. So that's... Um, all that's right. Anyway, a, a very them. interesting very impractical also we, we're not into so much atonement we're into saying change your behavior well the you know, idea was okay, these atom okay these I atonements were meant to change your behavior right it's like after you do that you're like i'm never going to kill a cow again i'm never going to do that again right yeah so the idea of like uh getting a dwi and okay and um i gotta pay this fine and do some time in prison it's meant you're meant to learn your lesson from it not right. meant to go get a dwi again so the but, idea is and, 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 change but, your but behavior the, yeah and go on but, but the, the the one of the most important points here is that this kind of atonement it may actually free you from having to go be dragged by the yamadudas and experience some kind of hellish life but it's not enough to get to the root of your desires and and but only bhakti does that see this is the, this is yeah. the you know this is what they're actually teaching us right now right is that this is going to burn up those karmic seeds yeah and, and and just even the unintentional practice of chanting the names was enough to save him from having to go to hell it didn't deliver him prema which is the goal but it saved him from this very dark level of punishment you know very interesting okay tomorrow we'll talk about the 10 offenses i think and, oh that's and, good yeah that's good. I think that'll be the right time to get back into that. Okay. All right. Let's uh, dive into some takeaways from Miss Mara. Miss Mara, you got any little like interesting goodie nuggets for us while we go on through our day? We're going to go on a cliff walk today. Cliff walk. Um, Careful walk on the cliff walk. What could go wrong walking on a cliff? <laughs> <laughs> while eating a peach. <laughs> Okay, I do have some. Good <laughs> yeah, well, careful with it. Put any pitted fruits. So. <laughs> <laughs> Those are indoor fruits. Uh, wake up to quietude. Wake up to okay. quietude. Quietude. Noise robs peace of mind. Yeah. yeah. Don't. Shh. Quiet. Don't turn your back on silence. Don't turn your back on it, Raghunath. <laughs> Sexual passion is noise in the mind. Real noisy. <laughs> the holy name is a rare, valuable coin in with your pocket change. Yep. Yeah. Valuable. <laughs> Calling Narayan in the helpless condition wipes out lifetimes of karma. Narayan. We're all Sudra mutts. We're all a little muddy. Yeah. It's okay. Validate everyone else and expect nothing in return. Nothing. You'll get nothing. <laughs> I have faith in the power of Krishna's name. Yeah. And, right. and we're one click away from ruining our life. 
Ooh, I like that. One <laughs> click away from that is a good actually. That's a t-shirt I'd wear. Okay. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us live on Zoom. At Lisa Tuttle, she's picking some zucchini. It's zucchini time, everyone. Very exciting. We're excited for a wonderful day hanging out, hanging out with Lori Pag and the Chief as we do our Joppa walk through beautiful Newport, Rhode Island. Thanks everybody for joining us. You can join us live tonight for our Patreon members. It's a community supported podcast. If you like what we do, like what we do, go to uh, patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages for any monthly contribution that you'd like to give. It helps us keep this going. And um, tonight we're doing uh, Sweet Baby Krishna for our Patreon members. We do some great stories about uh, actually from the Puranas. I think you're going to like it. We act it out. Sort of dramatic readings. We'll be in rehearsals all day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should have a dress rehearsal today. Let's let's do it in uh, comic in um, costume. <laughs> What's the pastime today? Runty Dave is one of them. Oh yeah, Runty Dave. Other, oh, we're not even quite sure. Tales of Narda, perhaps. Nard against a monkey head. 